Hey guys, welcome to Herbie's Reef. Um, today I am on call, so I'm in my scrubs. Um, I give anesthesia for a living, so um, I'm constantly going in and out when I'm on call on the weekends. But I wanted to try to start this video on the calcium reactor and uh, see if I can actually get it to you as promised. So first, um, I'm just gonna show y'all my calcium reactor. This is mine, it's a skims unit, and if I had it to do over, I would not purchase um, this calcium reactor. I would purchase a Geo. And the problem with this calcium reactor, you can see I've modified it, I've got the hemostats here, and um, I actually have just taken off completely the recirculation part that recirculates the CO2, because even though that sounds really good, um, sounds like it would use far less CO2 to recirculate it, reality is the CO2 gets trapped in there and it would build up so many bubbles and it would it sounded like you were doing laundry in your living room or I guess now it would be in the fish room it was so loud and then eventually it would actually vapor lock the pump um, it, it was such a problem that I was on the phone with BRS constantly and they finally just gave me my money back on this device and um, so I was going to buy a Geo and as a last stitch effort in case anyone has this, what I finally did is I just clamped off this recirculation line and I moved the CO2 input to right here. Um, so it goes, the way these work, you've got a CO2 tank here and the CO2 flows right here to this bubble chamber and you can see it bubble every now and then. And then the bubble will go through this tubing and go into this line and then this is where the water flows. It flows from the bottom through this pump and up through here and through there. Um, and eventually the water will leave. It has a second chamber of media back there and unfortunately the tightness of my fish room does not really allow you to see that, but that's a second chamber of calcium reactor media. So the, the, the water flows through that chamber last and that allows some of the CO2 to be gassed off into that media and then it goes from here through this line into the peristaltic pump. Normally most people don't have these pumps. It does not come with it. Um, that is an addition I've added and then it goes from there into the tank. You could also put the peristaltic pump into the input. This is the input. This water goes, this is a line that goes to my sump and uh, that pulls water into the calcium reactor. So you have water flowing in, flows through this tube, CO2 is added here. Um, this is a pH probe. And as the water flows through here, the CO2 is added. C the addition of CO2 causes water um, to become more acidic. And that process makes the media in here, which is just, if you look real closely, it's just old coral skeletons. So it causes the media to actually melt and it adds calcium, alkalinity, and trace elements to your aquarium. Um, so then just the final overview of actually how the calcium reactor works, you have to have this tank of CO2, um, and this is a regulator, um, and this is an expensive regulator. I, I believe the regulator alone costs $300. But if you buy the cheaper ones, I've never used one, but they say they're very hard to tune. Um, so because of that, I bought this one, and it's all automatic. There's two dials um, down here, or there's one dial, I'm sorry. And that, you can set an exact bubble rate with this. Um, you basically, you set, this is the tank pressure, and then that one is the, um, my phone won't focus, but that one's the pressure uh, that I'm allowing to go through the regulator. Um, and you could set that anywhere from five to 10 based on your CO2 needs and then you set a bubble rate. So I've got it right now at one bubble every seven seconds. Um, and you adjust this to make your water more acidic or less acidic. So that's where the pH probe comes in. And the pH probe is hooked to your apex. Um, and, and so I set the apex up to where it will actually shut this regulator off. This is plugged into the apex. So based on the pH, it, it shuts the regulator off and on. Now I have it tuned to where the regulator rarely ever shuts off. It pretty much just goes at a constant one bubble every seven seconds, which is ideal because it causes the regulator to last longer that way. But you could just 
you could set the bubble rate at one bubble per second and just have your apex control everything and it would automatically when the water reaches whatever pH you tell it it'll turn it off and then when you reach the high end of the pH it'll turn it back on um, and you want the pH in the reaction chamber where you're gonna set that depends on how much calcium and alkalinity you need and the flow rate of your effluent which is the fluid coming out and going into your sump after it's gone through the reactor you adjust those two things based on your calcium and alkalinity needs um, so when I first bought this I didn't have the peristaltic pump and I would run the pH at around 6.5 which is the low end where you keep the pH of a calcium reactor if you go too much lower than that you risk melting the media um, I hear that depends on the type of media you, you have some can actually go down as low as 6 I think um, but the one I had it was recommended not to go lower than than 6.5 um, so I had it at 6.5 and I was running a drip rate of 10 mils per minute and that is very slow my tank does not use near the calcium and alkalinity that a true SPS person's tank would use um, and my tank is new so the SPS isn't large I'm sure the demand will go up as it grows so the problem I was having is as the water would drip I just had it dripping by gravity into the sump and it would build up calcium in the you had you had a um, device that would control the flow it was a valve and it would control the flow dripping by gravity and it would gradually become to where I'd have to open it more and more and more to get the same drip rate well then all of a sudden whatever was blocking it would break through and it start dripping really fast and I had one time where it actually raised my alkalinity up to almost 20 um, and that scared me I almost lost I, I was worried I was gonna lose all my coral but actually they all looked fine I just gradually let them come back down nothing died I had no losses at all nothing even looked very stressed but I I thought that I got lucky um, so I started reading about better ways of doing it um, which is where this peristaltic pump came in and these these are expensive but once you get one of these, these calcium reactors become so easy. My, my alkalinity has stayed exactly at 8.5 for months. And uh, I, I don't have to change this. I don't touch it. And it just keeps it right at 8.5. Um, so my acros are so much happier since I've done that. Before when I was dosing two part, I actually would vary um, almost a point and a half between when I dosed and when it became time to dose again. Um, so I added this and it's been rock solid. The downside to this is it, it depends on which master flex pump. You can buy several types of peristaltic pumps. They're all expensive. These are not made for saltwater hobby. They're made for lab equipment and they're made for um, hospitals to use. So you buy them on eBay and they're, they're used. Most of them are used. You could buy one new. I think this pump that I have new is over $2,000. I paid $600 on eBay and uh, that was really a pretty good deal. So what this does is it keeps a constant flow of 10 RPM. You could also set it for mils, which 10 RPM equals 30 mils with the tubing I'm using. And if you look, this says easy load, and you have to watch which pump you buy and which cassette you buy. Ideally, you want a pump that will go from zero to 600 RPM. This one goes from 10 to 600 RPM. I didn't want to pay for the one that went to zero. It was even more expensive. Um, so at 10 RPM, I'm actually running 30 mils per minute. And I told you I was running 10 mLs per minute before I bought the pump. So I actually, the way I got around that, you could, I could have bought smaller tubing, which I, I have now if I ever decide to switch to it, and that will decrease the rate. If you had one that went down to zero, I'd, you could probably run whatever rate you want, but mine only goes down to 10, so I had to figure another way out. So I did buy some smaller tubing, but while it was, I was waiting on it to come in, I increased the pH, the pH going into this chamber. And so now I run a pH of 6.8 to 6.85, somewhere around there. And that has decreased the amount of media that melts, and it allows me to run a faster rate through there. But the beauty of this pump is it is constant. It never, ever clogs. It keeps it going at exactly 30 mLs per minute and my alkalinity never changes. Now I still check alkalinity frequently and I might have to adjust it um, as I get new corals and as mine grow, but for right now it's hanging right in there. So I highly recommend these peristaltic pumps. There's um, also a new calcium reactor called a Destaco. 
I believe. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's a fancy one. It's got a peristaltic pump already built in. I think it runs over $2,000, but once you count everything I have in on this calcium reactor, you're probably pretty close to that. So you might be better off with one of those. Everyone I've ever talked to that has one and all the reviews I've read about them are phenomenal. But if you already have a calcium reactor and you're trying to drip it in, I recommend these pumps highly. You can also get a cheaper one than I got. There, are, um, That's the next thing I want to talk about is different ones you can buy. And I find that it's easiest to find information on the Master Flex pumps. There's also um, another common brand that people use, but there's not near as much information on it as there are on these Master Flex. And then I recommend that you read the boards. I, I will uh, post a link to the main board that talks about these. They, they can tell you everything from which pumps work best to what tubing size to use, where to get the tubing cheaper, and um, all of that. They'll even tell you these connectors. Um, these are real specific as to what you need and they tell you where to get them, what part to order, how much they are, everything. Um, and the board it is from, on Reef Central and it's called the Official Master Flex Calcium Reactor Setup Thread. And if you are gonna do one of these pumps, I highly recommend that you get on there and you look up each pump that you might buy and find out what they say about it. And you can even ask them, they're very good at responding. The guys on there just gave me um, help that I would have never figured this out on my own between the tubing and everything. Um, I, most people run the LS17 tubing and, uh, and most people get a 6 to 600 RPM or a 0 to 600 RPM pump or this 10 to 600. And then this one's a brushless because they're quieter. You can go much, much cheaper, probably get one for 250 to 300 if you got one that was not brushless. If, you're, if noise is not important to you, then you can definitely go with that type. Um, but for me, I'm, noise just drives me crazy, um, so I had to get a quieter pump. And this one's brushless and it's digital. Some of them just have dials and there's all kinds you can buy. Um, but I highly recommend going to that board, Reef Central's official Master Flex Calcium Reactor Setup Thread. And also a good pl place to get the supplies for this, the tubing and the connectors and all that, is um, usplastic.com. So I'm going to go to this sump and show you the output of this and then that'll pretty much wrap up this video. We are at the sump and something I've realized watching a lot of you guys and your videos is it is hard to have as neat of a looking sump as some of you guys make. I mean, I really tried hard. Mine just looks, it is a mess. I don't know how y'all do it. Um, so to you guys that have sumps that look awesome, I just, congratulations to you. I wish I had your organization and your ability to do that. So I've been messing with this fan lately because I've pretty well taken my chiller offline. I just have it online for um, emergencies. Since we switched to the Radions, this fan has been able to keep me as cool as I've needed. But if you look right here, oh, and I cover a whole lot of my tubing with tape and it is so ugly. But I, before that I was growing algae in the tubing and it was clogging the flow. So I, I've done this, but I really need to go and wrap it more neatly. Um, and I will do that. I can at least do that much, but I don't know how to get rid of this mess where it all just, I mean, I've got, that's where my hole is in the wall going to the dish room. And all these cords just don't look as neat as you guys. And I've tried, I've zip tied a bunch of them together and I guess I just run out of energy or patience or something. And then, you know, I, I went with some of the hard plastic tubing, but I, I eventually switched to this and it just, mine's not beautiful, but it's not the worst I've seen either. So anyway, this is the output to that uh, calcium reactor. And you can see it kind of drips, not in a con constant drip, but it does a um, flow stop, flow stop, flow stop type thing. Even so, if you put a cup under it and you measure it, it's exactly 30 mLs per minute. So the other thing um, I'll go over real quick is why, why run a calcium reactor instead of two-part? For me, it's mainly, it's easier to maintain. The, once you get it set up, the calcium reactor is so easy and it never, ever fails on me. I'll, I'll show the reef while I talk here a little bit. I'm gonna get the gel filter and put it on. Cause you'll probably rather look at this than at me or a calcium reactor. So I, for the calcium reactor, it, when I was running two part, I was dosing by hand 